today I want to show you how to make my favorite summer breakfast, the sourdough brioche French toast. Hey everyone, today I want to show you how to make my favorite summer breakfast. Now this you can do several variations on. You can also use, I'm going to show you how to make, to do hamburger buns. It's delicious sourdough brioche. So let's dive in and I'll show you how I transform it into a beautiful summer breakfast. Now I know with a lot of different sourdough dishes and breads, it's sometimes confusing on how to get the timing right. So if you want to have a sourdough brioche French toast, when do you need to feed your starter? Then when do you need to let it do its bulk rise? It's the refrigerator time. So I'm gonna first show you exactly how I did it this time, and then I'm gonna present to you some alternate schedules. So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. Let's say that you want to do the sourdough brioche for buns and you want it ready for dinner time, or you're gonna have a brunch at 11 a.m. on a Saturday. I will run through some of those scenarios at the end here. So for me this time, I fed my sourdough starter about midday yesterday. Before bed last night, I mixed up my dough. Now the dough consists of one cup of bubbly sourdough starter. So what you're looking for here is whenever it bubbles up to the top of your jar before it falls back down. That's when the yeast has the highest activity and can really give it that lift that you're looking for. After that, I added three and a half cups of bread flour. Now I've played around with this recipe with doing some parts all purpose, some parts bread flour, and all all purpose and all bread flour. Honestly, it yields a really beautiful result either way. Today I did all bread flour just because I had it out, so I did three and a half cups of that. A quarter cup of sugar. Now, the first time I made this, I just used regular sugar. I've used honey for this. Today I used brown sugar because it is what I had on hand. Next, I added four eggs, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and a half a cup of milk. Next, I added in two sticks of room temperature butter. The thing about this brioche dough is you have to knead it a long time. It's the same way with my sourdough challah recipe. It seems like the dough is not going to actually come together, but if you're patient, you walk away, if you have a stand mixer with a dough hook, after about 15 to 20 minutes at a medium setting, it will eventually form a smooth and elastic ball that you can actually work with. If you have trouble with it sticking to your fingers, you can also handle the dough with wet fingers after it has been properly kneaded. But again, if it still feels like it doesn't have the right structure, these really wet doughs, just keep kneading them and it eventually does come together. Next, allow the dough to rise at room temperature for about six to eight hours. You just wanna wait until it is doubled. This could vary depending on if your home is really warm and humid or if it's colder, it'll take a little bit longer. You can also extend the process by putting it in the refrigerator if you want to do one part of it one day and another part the next. More on that in a little bit. So I put my dough in last night and it's been sitting at room temperature for, I guess it sat around 10 hours. It's really puffy right now. And then I put it in the refrigerator for a few hours. Now you can skip the part where you put it in the refrigerator if you're in a hurry. And I actually would have if I didn't need a quiet house to film this video, I would have just put it together this morning, I would have shaped it, added it to the loaf pans and baked it more quickly, but I needed to pause the process a bit in the refrigerator. I can see it's a lot bigger than it was. You also do want to cover it with something airtight or the top will get the film on it. And I'm just kind of pulling it away from the sides, trying not to totally deflate it, but that is going to happen. You will find that it's a little bit easier to shape if you allow it to rest in the fridge for a bit. But either way, it's fine. So it didn't rest a long time in the fridge this time, only maybe about an hour, but it still makes it to where you can work it a little bit better. Now I like to use one of these bin scrapers. I have a couple, I can't find my favorite one, but I'm just going to first divide the dough in half. I eyeball this, but if you want to get really particular, of course you could get a kitchen scale and make sure that they're the exact same. These will each make their own loaf of sourdough brioche. Next, I'm just going to divide each of the big balls of dough into eighths. So I'll cut them in half, and then fourths, and then fourths again. 
Adding parchment paper, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it does help for it not to stick. And then I'm just shape, and then I'm just shaping each of these balls and then dropping them into the pan. Next, I'm just going to allow them to rise until doubled and nice and poofy. And here's the thing with the sourdough brioche. Whenever you don't put it in the refrigerator first to allow it to cool down before shaping, it's buttery, it's a little bit difficult to handle. As you can see, this was not chilled very long. It was still totally possible, but it's easier to shape when it's in the fridge. But the downside to that is that if it starts out chilled, it takes longer to double again. And so if you need something right away, your best bet would be to never do the refrigerator phase at all, so that way it'll rise more quickly. So now this, in the next hour or two, should double. Whereas if it had been really cold dough, I find that it takes a little bit longer. So I'm gonna cover this, allow it to rise, and then I will be baking it. All right, these have been rising for about three hours. But since I didn't have the dough chilled first very much, hardly at all, they actually rose really quickly, plus it's very hot. It is obviously summer, and we don't keep our AC super pumping, so I mean, we have it going, but not super hot. And so these rose pretty quick. Now I'm just gonna give them an egg wash, which my favorite way to do this is by doing an egg yolk mixed with about a tablespoon of water and then brushed on it. And then I'm gonna bake both loaves at 425 degrees for about 25 minutes. Now that we have these beautiful loaves of brioche bread, again, they slice nice for sandwiches, we're gonna make them into my current favorite summer breakfast, French toast, so sourdough brioche French toast. I'm gonna combine eight eggs. Now first I'm gonna use up these broken ones because a two-year-old carried in the egg basket this morning during chores. About a cup and a half of milk. I have full milk here just from our cow. It's actually quite creamy, but you can use 2% or anything, really. You can even use a milk alternative if you need to. And about a tablespoon of honey, maybe a couple tablespoons. about eight slices, very thick slices of bread here from one loaf. Now it's also really delicious to add in vanilla, and you should. I'm just currently out. So I wish I had it, but I don't. To compensate though, I'm gonna make a really good berry syrup. Because this is a nice soft bread, it will soak up the egg mixture a lot faster than regular sourdough bread. So that's why I love using this for French toast. To 
make this a summery breakfast, I am going to make a berry syrup. Berries are in season right now, uh, blueberries specifically. So I'm gonna get some blueberries going in this pot with the lid on. If they're fresh, you wanna add maybe a little bit of water at first while they're simmering. If they're frozen, you don't really need to add any additional water. Once they cook down a little bit, I'm gonna add some honey and then blend them up with my immersion blender. This tastes so good over this brioche French toast. And I might even skim off some cream and make a homemade whipped cream to top it with as well. Now that you know how to make sourdough brioche and our favorite summer breakfast, let me explain to you a few different baking schedules so that you can have this whenever you need it. So let's say that you want this for breakfast. One possibility, of course, is to get it completely ready the day before, store it in something airtight like a Ziploc bag or a beeswax wrap, and then just use the bread that you've made to make French toast. That's probably the best bet. Now, these baking schedules will totally depend on what time of year it is, how warm it is in your house, how humid it is. So you could have a situation where you shape the brioche before bed, leave it out overnight, and in the morning it's actually too fermented. You also could get this done very compact, so in 12 hours, if it's really warm in your house. So you'll have to know the process a little bit to plan it properly. But here are just a few schedules that I've come up with. So baking for dinner, you'll want to feed the starter before bed, mix up the dough in the morning, allow it to do its first rise for six to eight hours or until doubled, place the dough in the refrigerator until the next morning, in the morning divide and shape and then allow them to rise throughout the day and then bake whenever they have doubled. If you want them nice and hot in the morning, you can feed your starter before bed, mix up the dough in the morning, put the dough into the refrigerator around noon, shape the dough right before bed, and then allow it to rise overnight and then bake in the morning. Now you'll just need to play around with this. I find that we can enjoy this recipe any time of the day. I love an enriched dough like this the challah, the brioche with the eggs in it and the butter, it just makes such a soft, fluffy, pull apart bread, kind of similar to Hawaiian rolls, but maybe not quite as sweet. It really lends itself so well to something like French toast because unlike the regular sourdough bread that has a hard time soaking up the eggs and the milk, it doesn't give you that restaurant French toast like you might be used to, it's just so good. Uh, the sourdough brioche actually is great for that. Another alternative method of shaping is to braid this like the challah. So basically you divide the dough in half and then in two thirds so that you have two separate loaves, each with three pieces. Roll them into about 18 to 20 inch long strands and then braid them and then bake them on a parchment lined sheet after they've risen. Now that is a wonderful way to do it. I've showed that over on my Instagram and then I have a blog post outlining how to do both of these. So if you want the printable versions of this recipe and the challah and then some demonstrations on how to shape them, make sure to check out the links in the description box below. I have all of that over on my blog so you can actually print it and make this in your own kitchen. We have been loving this. I want to have it on hand all summer long. It also makes really good sandwiches so it slices really nicely and you can put some deli meat for a hot summer day where you're packing a picnic or going to the pool going down to the creek 
it is perfect for that. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are brand new to my channel, hit the subscribe. I make new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.